It's time to feel the rage. Welcome to Film Rage, where we talk movies in theater, streaming, and classic films as well. Directors and actors, beware as you cannot hide from the rage. My name is Bryce, and I'm part of the Film Rage crew, which also includes Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, hey, Bryce. And Murray, whose license to kill has expired, but I hear his license to thrill is still valid. Is this true, Murray? You betcha. Hey there, Merman. So with the introductions out of the way, let's rage on. Oh, baby. This license needs to get punched. Thanks to all who've been supporting us. If you love our independent podcast, please like, subscribe, share, and give us a five-star rating on your listening platform. Or, even better, support us and join the Film Rage community by joining our membership at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Film Rage YYC. If you cannot commit to a membership, you can still buy us a movie rental and dare us to see a terrible film like the one Bryce will be talking about later today. Now, let's get to raging. But first... Here's a word from our sponsor. Hey Bryce, what are you doing tonight? I'm going to my favorite cinema, Canyon Meadow Cinema, to see the best second-run movies at the best price. What? How inexpensive are they? Regular price is five bucks, five bucks. Regular price is five bucks, five bucks. Makes me hope they also serve pizza. They do, plus a lot of other great food choices. Plus, I'm planning my office Christmas party there. They can host a plethora of options for any get-together. Gaming, movie, drag show? Drag show? Now I know where I'm planning my next party. Hey, maybe you think there's a, a Liam Neeson or a superhero movie planned? Ugh, I hope not. But uh, maybe there'll be a great independent documentary. Sure. Call CMC at 403-670-5444 to book a special event or go online at canyonmeadowscinemas.ca. You guys enjoy that promo way too much. Yes. yes. I enjoy a lot of things too much. Excessively too much. Mm. And my nipples are like diamonds. I don't know how to follow that. Well, why don't you get strange? All right. Doctor Strange. We're already strange. Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness. Whoa. All right, Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness, directed by Sam Raimi, had me looking forward to what he might be able to do with the unlimited budget of a Marvel franchise. Sadly, he did nothing new, aside from a welcome Bruce Campbell sighting and one cool sequence that teased us with other universes that even had one where everyone was made of paint. There was nothing of note here. <laughs> it's just there. But it was cool to see the Necrono Necronomicon yeah. introduced to the MCU. Yes. Oh, wait, it wasn't the Necronomicon? It, wasn't. it was Darkhold? What? Nah, oh, no. nah. I'm pretty sure it was the Necronomicon. It was the Necronomicon. Absolutely was. Anyway, there are a few new characters introduced that will be paramount to the future of this, you know, MCU crap. I am sure. So if it was a, if it was solely created to set up the future MCU crap, then why would you get Sam Raimi to direct? Why not let him express the imagination and creativity that he possesses? This whole film felt like he was handcuffed to the direction of the MCU and no independent thought would be accepted. I won't talk about the CGI in depth, but does every single shot have to be in front of a green screen? They also got the name of the movie wrong, as this was a sequel to WandaVision, not the first Doctor Strange film. This was so close to being a rage, but how could it be? I left there with a smile on my face. Thank you, <laughs> Bruce Campbell, for sending me away happy. What I'm trying to say, this was a superhero movie, so it was meh. Huh, who knew? Who absolutely knew? Everyone. Uh, everyone? I didn't know that before going in because, you know, normally that's not the same for me. I don't have the same feelings of superhero movies that, now that you do. Well, but um, you didn't have to look at this film too long if you didn't look at any pre-credits before you watched the movie to know that it was directed by Sam Raimi because mm -hmm. it's full of Raimiisms all the way through it. 
from his humor to the Raimi vision shots to the dark humor to the Bruce Campbell sightings. These are the things that I liked most about this film. Plus, um, Secrets Out. I'm a bit of a fan of the Doctor Strange character. I like him. Yeah. In fact, I believe the first one, I think I gave it a Mondo, which I don't give very many superhero movies Mondos. But it's the runtime, the force-like powers, which are never consistent and always seem to happen along with other superhero dumbness that takes this film from being much, much better. I'm thinking, you know, Wanda and Doctor Strange and the powers are limited sometimes and then other times overly powerful. Plus... It's kind of like the force. It is like the force. It's force-like powers that they're using. Um, plus all the wizards protecting this temple. I'm not sure, like, as you're watching the movie and you're going... I actually turned to Murray, I think, we were watching and I'm like, um, why don't they just open a portal and take this person to another place where Wanda's not coming? Yeah. I don't, I don't right? remember, I don't remember like, that conversation. I do remember the one about, about the uh, the octopus, though. Yeah. It's a rather obvious uh, plot twist that they seem to be alluding to the, the main characters. Yeah. Mm. yeah. The giant so, octopus with a giant eye. Yeah, I like giant eyes. Um, they even talked about the fact that, you know, Doctor Strange had told Wanda where they were hiding the place. So they even made a point of it. It just, I just, it, it doesn't make any Nobody's sense. Nobody's perfect. Nothing makes sense. No, these, he yeah. thought she was a friend. Yeah, well, that's that's all well and good, but they had to make a point of telling her, oh, you mean you told Wanda where we're going to be? Well, how about you get somewhere else? And they're all just standing there. <laughs> yeah, these are the type of superhero things that seem to happen all the time in superhero movies. No one uses common sense. They just continually do stupid things to move stories forward to a place that fits the narrative of whatever, you know, in this case, it's a sequel to the first Doctor Strange or WandaVision, as Bryce had said. But ultimately, it's the same goal. You've got a villain and you've got superhero or ers, and, um, and then they get to the end and something happens and it's either funny at the end, like in this one, or not so funny. This does get extra points for the Raimiisms and uh, the whole dead Doctor Strange bits. Plus, I'm kind of liking the multiverse concept. Are you? I'm just hoping that they can find a better way to deal with it. Because right now, so far, I haven't loved everything that's going on with it. But I like the idea of it. I like this concept of being able to go between. Um, let's, between let's, it. let's talk about the multiverse after. after yeah, Earth's sure. Let's talk we'll, about that. We'll talk about why I don't like it all right well this is cool i love talking about things that we both have different sense of opinions um yeah i i just wanted i want the powers to be more consistent and um yeah it's uh surprising that it's a superhero movie and yet it's a meh for me because i had a bit of fun and it wasn't completely annoyed all the way through the movie and i loved pizza papa or Papa Pizza. Pizza, Pizza. Papa Pizza. That's yeah, right. Papa Pizza is the saving grace of this movie. I kind of want them to just do a short of Papa Pizza. Yes. Someone needs to make pizza bowls. Yeah, I, I just want somebody in the world to start. I want to go to my grocery store and be able to buy or Pizza Papa truck. That's Papa Pizza. pizza. Yes. yes, exactly. It was a man. It was a man. It's it's actually better than I thought it was going to be. Awesome. <laughs> now, Murray, what'd you think? Well, Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi. Yes. There's a reason he's one of my favorite all time directors. While Tobey Maguire is not my favorite Spider Man, he's mine. mine. And Spider Man 3 was terrible. It, was. it wasn't great. Uh, the man does know his superhero flicks. I mean, we had zombie fun, cheesy one-liners, jump scares, and Bruce Campbell punching himself. That was good. And then we have my two favorite Benedicts, Cumberbatch and Wong, uh, together again. Apart from Wong the Sorcerer Supreme, we get Hero Cumberbatch, Evil Goatee Cumberbatch, Evil Dead Cumberbatch, Ponytail Cumberbatch, and a few others. Plus, Scarlet Witch kicking ass and punching dicks 
with magic. Guarantee you, I enjoyed this magic a hell of a lot more than any Harry Potter Fantastic Beast crap. <laughs> All those guys seem to do is levitate teacups. In fact, I loved it so much, I went to see it a second time. Wow. Just to take the bad taste of our next movie out of my mouth. Oh. It was a super duper califragilistic expialidocious mondo. But it didn't have Julie Andrews in it or True. Dick Van Dyke. I think they're both alive. I would have loved to have seen Harry, or Mary, Potter, uh, Mary Poppins fly by. That would have been under umbrella. That would have been cool. cool. That would have been a universe. And I don't know if you guys spotted seen. the classic in one of the scenes. I didn't notice till the second time I watched it. Ah. So here's what Sam I don't Rainey's like about car. Here's Sam. what I don't like about the multiverse. There are no there are no stakes. There's no consequences because in the next multiverse, so someone gets killed, who cares? They just go to another multiverse and there they are again. So it's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Well, yes and no. Yes and no. Because, as they said, and I don't fully understand the science because there I'm not no a multi. I'm not a multiverse okay, scientist. So can we go to like the Star Wars multiverse and we can have Doctor Strange going against like Luke there's Skywalker? Possibly, there's, yes. There's only one universe. Possibly, Star yes. Wars. So we go. So it'll be Luke Skywalker versus Doctor Strange. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. So there you go. That's a that's part of the multiverse that you may get to see. It's all because they're all Disney. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You it's might get Disney. You might go and you see Family Guy in there too. I think Spider Man is a pig. So yes, yeah, no, any, anything pig. can happen. He, it's it's actually Spider Ham. It's Peter Parker, I mean. the amazing. Still, Spider-Man. it's still a pig. <laughs> yeah. So saying. so we the the it's limitless, Bryce. Yes. We can literally and have anything that Disney and, owns and, in in the multiverse. So we could have like. Homer Simpson? Yes. There you go. Yes. Well, they own, in the multiverse, they own the Simpsons. We might get we might get the cast from um, everything or, uh, sunny in Philadelphia. There you go. Because they own that too. And this is what I'm getting at. Is it? Isn't it's that just, great? It's all so stupid that it's just there's. I don't. But get it. okay. So, you but what stupid, if they could? I say fun. What if they could do it good? Sorry, Murray. I didn't think they did it as well as you did. Uh, what if they did it really, really good? Kind of like. Uh, everything all at once, everywhere. Yeah, I knew you bring that up. Which they did. It's See, awesome. that multiverse right? confused the crap out of me. That yes. multiverse was awesome. Yeah. See, this what if one, they did this that? This I understood. I would love it if they did that. But that's or why I'm excited about the multiverse. Something, you know, at least on that level. But right now, as I say... We're getting... Don't MCU. get me wrong. When they were going through all the little multiverses, they were like going through... Yeah. That was actually... There was some potential there. And I was like, huh, this is kind of interesting. And I thought this is where this is going to get really good because Sam. This is where Sam Raimi can excel. Could, yeah, oh yeah, I agree. And then all it was was this little two-minute package of them going through multiverses for no so reason at you all. Would, you went at a three-hour movie, otherwise. And then they went into this formulaic nothingness. Well, they went to they went to be a superhero formula. This is really what it was. Yeah. And as they said, what's her name's character? It's like she only time jumped to where they needed to be. What was like, her name? That was the whole reason of this mo- movie. So you shouldn't probably call her what's her name because the only reason for this movie was to introduce this America. Well, I don't want to give away yeah. too much. But, America. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, she ti- she. That was the only reason why this verses. movie was existed. Like, it existed. It's to introduce one character, which is kind of annoying, isn't it? I, think I know. <laughs> Introduced, introduced a lot of characters. Well, it also... But yeah, main, but it was to introduce that, that was this one. one. She is going to be paramount to the rest of what goes on. Yes. And, but also, it's now changed. And that's what's annoying. One, because... Shouldn't, shouldn't this have been, like... Like, if this is the whole reason why you're making this movie, where there's, like, zero creativeness, why is Sam Raimi directing this? Why are you... Why isn't this just something on TV? A six-part whatever. I can like, 100% tell you why that is. Yes. Are you ready? Uh, money. Nostalgia. Oh, nostalgia. That, yes. It's not. It's all nostalgia, man. They just came out with Spider-Man before this one, and that was Sam Raimi. So they're leading us into this version. I. But. Uh, and the nostalgia brings people out. This is going right. to sell more tickets than probably Spider-Man because everybody's going to no, want to go. It, it did. No. There we go. No Open, way. It already yes, did. It there really. you go. Well, well, Murray, well not all the time. Murray but saw it twice. It's released, opening weekend it did. It, it's re- yeah. yeah, it was it, released it, it, it in a different it. time. Though. So it's, it could it could just be, be things ready. Things are a little more open right now. But yeah, yeah whatever. Spider-Man was a better movie and I didn't like it particularly it would, that much. It, I gave that one a man also. Yeah. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it, Murr, because... 
I love Sam Raimi too. I kind of wish he would do Drag Me to Hell through the multiverse. That would be a really good movie. There you go. Or The Gift. Oh my God. The Gift in the multiverse? The Gift in the multiverse. He did The Gift? Yes. Yes, he did do The Gift, which was a true gift to us. All right. So, superhero movies. Eh. Well, you love them or you don't. Or, yeah. Or they're just the same every time. They're just with Not a different always. spin. We got to see Vortex. Yes. This is a very emotional and realistic portrayal of an elderly couple dealing with Alzheimer's and aging in general. Never have I seen a portrayal of a character as powerful as Francois Lebrun playing L. The yes. mom who is suffering from a debilitating, debilitating disease. So good. The style of film is not necessarily what you may be used to for Gaspar Noé. I know if that's the last pronunciation properly, but I'm going to say Noé, maybe. Sure. Uh, f- uh, films. Uh, and using a split screen for our two leads, pretty much the entire film was interesting as it all seemed like it was in real time. This film has deep and moving scenes covering a topic that is not always easy to discuss, let alone portray on film. These characters were really, we really get to see um, how their last three days on earth affect each other and those around them. The story is so real. You feel like you were watching a documentary and at times it does drag a bit and Mm, suffers from a too long of a runtime. Of two hours too and 22 sh- minutes. Too short. I absolutely love the story that the, that was being woven. That's deep and full of realness for our two characters. I feel it could have done with a little bit of editing to get it under two hours. But this film has sat with me ever since uh, I saw it. Yeah, and I actually kind of I kind of want to go back and see it again. Yeah. Um because <laughs> uh because because it sat with me, it, it it gets the mondo. Even though the length I didn't find was was right. I think that they could have found some editing. Plus, I did actually nod off a couple times in the movie. What? Uh, I did, uh, yeah. But when I snapped back, I was very engaged. <laughs> I am having a tough time staying up late these days. You're old. And I have some things to unpack about it. But I I actually did went back and did some reading about um about him and why this was done. Almost all of this was ad lib from the two actors. Yeah. Like that. I believe it. Yeah, it's she it's was so she amazing. was mind bending this woman. Yeah. I, I want to now go back and I've seen her in quite a few French films, but mm. I want to go back and see everything she's been in. Yeah. All right. Over oh, man. Here. Just say ditto and then I'll read mine. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> uh, nearly everything about this film annoyed me. Nice. First off, a foreign film with subtitles. Not my favorite. Second, the whole film friggin' movie was split screen. Yes. Which I was not aware of. Which was great. Was this a I found it really distracting and in many parts unnecessary. Like when they're all sitting at the same kitchen table and still have two simultaneous camera angles. Yes. So good. This film was also full of unbelievably long steady cam tracking shots yes and horrible jump cuts with flash frames yes which if i had epilepsy i would have had a seizure i'm sure mm, possibly. Um, these are devices used by filmmakers sparingly for effect gets real tired after about 20 minutes of it uh in fact if i had driven my own car to the theater i probably would have been gone after the first <laughs> half hour wow then there's the story while there were some good performances i'll admit I found the subject matter very uncomfortable and way too personal. I have fr- I have friends and loved ones that have suffered from dementia. Mm, yeah, I didn't find it amusing or uh, funny at all. You're not supposed to. Uh, well, they tried to make light of it a few times. No, well, no, oh, well they okay, did wait, not. Let, no, let they him finish because we do. Wait, I have some comments around that, so uh, I'd like to hear I've more. I've dealt with this says. in my real life. I don't need to see it on a big screen. So, and yeah, I I was basically antsy in my seat the whole time and it was mm. way too long so i eventually just left yeah uh rage okay well i i get that about um 
about your uncomfortability with it, which was, I think, intentional oh, by the director. Sure. And um, right. let's talk about it more when Bryce finished. So, yeah, uh, Vortex, right, right from the beginning, we get the uh, that it is dedicated to all those whose brains will decompose before their hearts. And then it proceeds to beautifully present that sentiment with the lives of a couple in their twilight years as they struggle with age and dementia. The film stars Dario Argento, but the film is anchored by an amazing performance by Francoise Lebrun as Elle. Much of this film was on split screen as we get two different perspectives of the same moment for most of the film. I was always a little more focused on Elle. LeBron's portrayal was so convincing that this did not even feel like she was acting. This felt more like a documentary as we observe this couple as they cope with their current situation. There are no contrived moments, just a natural progression as this film shows how getting old can be, be quite a frightening proposition for many. This is two and a half hours of the most honest look at aging that I've ever witnessed on screen. Vortex was unapologetically truthful and heartbreaking. Vortex was Mondo. Yeah, you know, about your comment about the humor, Marie. So, um, these people... Early on it was, but I mean, again, it got serious as it got more serious. the, the, The things that I thought was, you have to find a way in a film like this because of A, the length, and B, the content of it, to bring some levity to it. And, and I think he did an amazing job in his direction to bring levity to it in ways that we could appreciate as opposed to being necessarily negatively affected by it. Like the little CLF and, that no, was in at it. At no point was it poking fun at anything. No, not, well, not at all. I didn't it was. I just I didn't find any It made it... Well, and, and I, I have a I've feeling... I've lived through it, that's all. I have a feeling... Well, we've all lived through it. I have I had grandparents yeah, that have gone through have. dimension... Dementia and uh, and and I have family members still right now that are going through yeah, dementia. So I. so, but you know what? Even um, there's a actually there's a lot of times when you were living your regular life and you live with people that have dementia, and they were a funny person. They're going to still do things that are funny. Mm-hmm. And that, like the example, the the CLF, the, the little grandchild. Oh my god! I didn't even he, mention that. he was the best. He was the best part in it. They're he having the probably of one it. of the most serious the conversations. conversations. And he's it's, just he's just smashing his he's car. In his car. And that ready. was that was made made this so real. It's because yeah. that is totally what would be happening. That's yeah. what would be happening. This little th- four year old would be just doing things that he doesn't kids know they're do. having a serious conversation. He doesn't he even know they have. De- he doesn't even know they have dementia. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, this was a powerful film. You know, most of his films that he makes are so in your face. You can't escape it. it um, Climax for me was just oh, yeah. was mind-bendingly fantastic. Yeah. And then and to then follow this is, up... This is, in, this is still in your face, but in a subtle, different way. Well, and it's... it's, it's a, I mean, he does, he does bring the drama in his films, but he usually focuses on young people in his yeah. films. This is like him taking a complete... And actually, the reason he, he he cast Argento in this, I read, was that he kind of became friends with Argento. And Argento's... One of his films were canceled that he was supposed to be, be making or producing. And he had time in his calendar. So he said... Do you want to do you want to play this part? And he said, "Yeah, sure." Yeah. So that's how they how they ended up casting him in it. Which, you know, I didn't have a problem with his acting at all in the he's, film, he's but good. it's 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 like how how can you even well, shine yeah, a little bit no. alongside of her? Francoise Lebrun just it doesn't matter who they put opposite her. He was just going to Yeah, it was just she was were, just <laughs> so good. Like this is this is one of the the all-time great performances. Like she yeah. is amazing in this. Yeah. It's it's funny that her name was L because yeah. I was going to say there's only there's one another... other character <laughs> story that I've ever seen that yes. would come close to the same levels as this is L from yeah. the movie by Verhoeven. So Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. it's still playing, so I might have to go back and see it again and then we can talk about it with Murray again. <laughs> Think Murray will want to come back and watch, well, it, watch the it again? Time? That would be a no. All right. <laughs> Even You're... if we get the dubbed version? No. <laughs> All right, we're switching things up now. Yeah, we are. And we're going to start with me. The joy. For a change. Uh, I'm turning a corner on the Merman Minute. I'm tired of lists. And what? Raging about stuff. What? We love lists. 
Because of my new cable TV plan, I now have six movie channels. What? Along with the ones I already had. So from now on, I'm going to talk about stuff I find that I haven't seen before. Oh. Unfortunately, most of the films they show is stuff I have already seen because Uh of this podcast. (laughs) But I'll try to find something, even if it isn't recent. Nice. So here goes. First up, Cheryl. This is the HBO documentary about one of my favorite musicians slash rocker chick, Cheryl Crow. Nice. I've been a fan since the beginning and was surprised by all the stuff she had to deal with earlier in her career, way before all that Lance Armstrong nonsense Mm -hmm. and her own cancer scare. Yep. I can't believe she turned 60 this year. Wow. This doc was very entertaining and definitely a Mondo. And it's on HBO. Nice. Next up, we have Get Shorty. Yes, I've never seen this really? before. John Travolta, Gene Hackman, Rene Russo, Danny uh-huh. DeVito, Delroy Lindo, Dennis Farina. Why haven't you seen this? I don't know. I just never watched it. A collection of Hollywood greats. And it was Hollywood poking fun at itself. Uh, a la The Player, which I loved. Mm. Uh, I thought I would like it better. <laughs> uh, so did I The plot was pretty convoluted uh, Gangsters trying to screw over other gangsters And conceited actors And the ending was kind of stupid too um, Entertaining but just a meh There you go I think I gave it a meh too mm. And mm, finally yeah. <laughs> The Super Bob Einstein Show What? Bob Einstein, a.k.a. Super Dave Osborne, was part of my childhood. Along with all the Cheech and Chong and Skinamax movies I watched at my dad's place as a teenager, I also enjoyed Bizarre. It had comedy, swearing, boobs, and Super Dave. What else did you need as a 15-year-old? Nothing. Little did I know how far back his career actually went. Um... Some others brothers, Sonny and Cher. And one of his first partners was Steve Martin. Uh, look up Officer Judy on YouTube if you want to laugh. I also learned that Albert Brooks is his brother, who was named Albert Einstein at birth. Oh, jeez. No wonder he changed it. Yeah. His next door neighbors were Carl and Rob Reiner. Nice. So I learned so he learned comedy at a very early age. The doc is mostly quips from every big name comic in the business, you know, Seinfeld, Larry David, all those guys, who knew and loved him. But it's still worth a watch. Very high, meh. Nice. Hmm. And that's what I watched. Cool. So Super Bob, Bob Einstein Super was Bob the guy Einstein. who played Super Bob Dave. Bob Einstein was the guy's name, and he played Super Dave. Also, ah, I love Among Super other Dave. characters, but that was the one everyone knew. Ah, that's cool. I like it. Anyway. Bizarre yeah. with John Biner. Yeah. That's correct. <sighs> You always yeah. bring the joy. Anyway, I guess it's your guys' turn. Temperature rising. Vision blurring. Rage taking over. Let me guess. Superhero movies. No. No. Surprisingly not, because I gave one a man. Well. Uh, that's yesterday's news, Murray. Oh. Today's... Rage, other than Putin, of course. This is yesterday's yesterday's news. Yes, yesterday's yesterday's, tomorrow's and forever Next after's day. news. My rage this week is Sam Raimi. Why did you make this and not make the multiverse gift? Because that would have been amazing. I'm like, Sam Raimi, why did you come and put your foot back into the MCU? And not just give us another amazing horror film. That's my rage this week. Why did he make Spider-Man 3? It's because he was contracted to. There you go. He chose to make this, Murray. I don't know. He chose with his own hands and eyes to make this movie when he could have made Drag Me to Hell 3 or 2. So, Sam, what happened to you, buddy? That's all I want to say. Guy's got to work. So keep that, be, Murray. Not everybody has to work. Got to pay the bills. Sometimes they can just keep making money he, off their he does, franchises. He can, yeah, he can. He can work on better stuff. That's right. Maybe, he could. He, he could revive Ash versus the Evil Dead, the TV series. Maybe he which did this good. one so he could do another movie he wanted to do. Maybe that. That happens too. Could be. Could be. But I wish he didn't. 
I That's disagree. my rage. I liked mm. it. You actually loved it. All right. My rage is that another stupid blockbuster film that is void of any real substance will be claiming another victim as someone will be taken off the undoubted list this week. Uh oh. The MCU and the Transformer franchise has single handedly accounted for a handful of folks that had a shot of being on our undoubted list. This time around, a 45 second cameo in Doctor Strange that for some reason was actually credited, which I don't understand because he's barely Uh-oh. in it. Uh-oh. <sighs> in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has turfed an actor from the realm of the undoubted. Stay tuned and I'll tell you who it is on the list section in our program in a few minutes. Damn you, MCU. Damn you all to hell. Rage. Subsiding. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. We are Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. good. Join us each week as we dive into the depths of streaming movies for the greater good. good. You can find us on Twitter at Cheap Seat Cast, Facebook.com slash Cheap Seat Reviews, and our website is CheapSeatReviews.Libsyn.com. All for the greater good. How can this be for the greater good? good. Shut it! The greater good. The greater good. I love those boys. All right. I'm going to be walking off here in a minute. Walking off. I'm totally walking off right now. I'm walking here. I'm walking off. I'm doing a total walk off. You're going to that first? Oh, well, yeah. actually, the suspense that Bryce has built, it's yeah. almost like I want to know who's leaving our doubted, undoubted list. You must know. I, I kind of tried to look into it. I'm like, oh, I didn't see it. <laughs> I even looked at our undoubted list. I'm like, who the hell was in this? I'm hoping it wasn't Tom Hardy. No, it wasn't <laughs> Tom Hardy. Wasn't that, he's in the next one. <laughs> no. Oh, no. A, a gentleman by the name... Of Michael Stuhlbarg. No, not Michael. He's in the Undoubted. Is oh yeah, because yeah, oh, yeah. he is. I've is seen him in like two he things. was. Is he was. We've um, seen him in everything. He's, he's gone off the Undoubted list for a forty-five second cameo in a stupid Marvel movie. Like this is ah, just upsets me so much. Was he not but, in the first but Doctor Strange movie? Because be, this but ultimately, it's his own fault. It is all his own fault. That's he has choice in like, what movies he, does. he makes. Recur- is it not a recurring character? But yeah, his, his previous movie, by the way, was Beckett, which was also meh. Back to back mez make you gone. From Sorry, the Michael Stuhlberg. Stuhlberg is gone. You yes. were. That pains me because I love, love, love Michael Stuhlberg. Who doesn't? Yeah. He is, well, he was. He was. Undoubted. He's only seven to go. That's true. He's got a man. He's got a man. One's his next one's Mondo. He That's doesn't right. Do back he, to back mess. Well, let's. You know what? I'm now curious as to what he's in next. I know what he's in now, but it's not a movie. What is right. he in next? He's in that TV series with uh, Colin Firth and Tony Collette. Ah, he's not very good in that either. Whatever. But it's a TV show. So he's it doesn't good, count. He's good in everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's see what gore. Gore. Yeah. It sounds good. Is it a horror film? I don't know. It's just gore. Just gore? Here, I'll click on it and there's see what no, happens. There's no in- information about... A young man spends a summer in Italy where he meets his idol, Gore Vidal, who teaches him about life, love, and politics. I'm in. Yes. Yeah. Hey, and you'll be happy because Kevin Spacey's in it. What? Yeah. He's still acting. Kevin Spacey's back? Kevin Spacey and Michael Stuhlbarg are... What? How did Spacey get two, back in the, the good two, list? Not only that, <laughs> there's worse people out there now. Kevin Spacey is Gore Vidal. <sighs> wow, this is interesting. You know, here's the thing: people get on the what do they call that when you've been outed for you know you're off cancel cultured him. Yeah, uh, and yet I don't think he was ever 
convicted of anything. He was just charged. No, he was so, he, no, he wasn't ever so how about we, it. until he's proven guilty, we claim he's innocent, just like right. the court should do. I will just uh, continue to have no comment on it until every till we know up. exactly. Till I'm not know saying sure. one way or the other. I I still think he's a fine actor. I still think you have to go back and buy and see that movie because I know we've put you through hell in the last couple months with our Rage or Dare segment. So I really need you to go back and watch that movie. That is oh the the worst movie that's ever been made. Yeah, that that it's not the worst movie that's ever been made. Yes, the Life of David Gale. No, is the you worst have to go back and watch it in the history and of compare cinema. it to some of the stuff you've already it is, seen. It is so dumb and so heavy handedly foreshadowed that why am after two minutes I'm like, why am I watching the rest of this movie? I know exactly what's gonna happen. And guess what? It did. What I thought is exactly what happened. Oh. And it was just it a was. frustrating journey the whole way because I'm like, yeah, this is But now you know what's gonna happen. gonna happen. Rewatch it. Maybe it won't be so frustrating. Uh. <laughs> right. Okay. Well the more important thing this week, yes. other than losing another good person off our undoubted list. I forgot how bad this movie was. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had I, memories of it being okay, and it's not. Actually, you know, the funniest thing about it is when we were thinking about it last week, I thought it was the movie Prophecy, not The Prophecy. Yeah, no, that's a different animal. Yeah. You're like, and what? It, Walken was in Prophecy? Yeah, that's, what was, that's why I was so confused. I was like, is, is that why you told me it was on Tubi? Yeah, probably because Prophecy's on Tubi. Because it wasn't. Yeah. Luckily... It was on Prime, which I happen to now. There you go. I did find it. All right. So we had Satan versus Gabriel in the the battle of who is more mesmerizing. Yeah. I have to admit, as much as I still think Viggo Mortensen is mesmerizing when he's up against anyone else, fortunately, he was not as mesmerizing as Christopher Walken to me. No, but Martin's performance in this was just kind of silly. I thought I didn't. Know. I thought he was still good. I, I mean, it's early I, in his I career. Didn't, I didn't like the. I didn't like it the whole portrayal. The screen I time. Just, yeah. yeah, I watched for like an hour and a half. Like, where the hell's Vigo? Where yeah, the where hell is, is Vigo? Where's our man Vigo? Like, where's Vigo? I didn't see him anywhere. I'm like, there was a lot of Eric Stoltz and. What's his name? Elias. By the Coteus. way, what's the deal with Eric Stoltz? Why isn't he like doing stuff? He know. probably is. He's probably doing TV shows. Oh, yeah. well, I like Eric Stoltz. Stuff, so yeah. do I. He's a good actor. You, yeah, we should so, we should review what he's been in. Yeah, they just they waited too long to bring Vigo's character in. But uh, no, he wasn't as power. So Murray, are you also saying that Anyways, Walken yeah, was more uh, mesmerizing? Absolutely. Walken, right. Walken, Walken. It's it's tough people to take out Walken. We got to find. Well, and, and Walken was in the entire movie, and he was absolutely awesome in the whole movie. Well, he's you know what he's not. He's very rarely not awesome, other than the last movie we saw him in, which I did not. When he was and against Sean Penn, which he's made, not against they made Sean three Penn. three of these, apparently. No. He, a was problem. he in all three of them? I don't know, but Walken is. Walken he's in all three is, yeah. of them. I thought they killed him off, but apparently yeah, he's, no, in, Walken he's just, in two and three as Walken well. Walken comes like, back over and over again. I don't know about Lucifer. I'm assuming he is too. <laughs> you but. can't kill Walken just like you can't get him off the mesmerized <laughs> list. <laughs> There's going to be a day he's going to come against Francis McDormand or he's going to come against no Viola Davis that. and it's going to be bye-bye Walken. Bye bye walking. Well, if you haven't been with those two yet, it's not likely he'll be with them. Yeah, maybe they're there. choosing not to be with him because he's probably <laughs> heard of a list. I don't know. He, he's, and he's avoiding those. He's, he's been in movies what? with a he's lot. He's like, of oh, that the... role sounds really good. Wait a minute, Viola Davidson? No, I don't want to be off. The I don't want to be. I want to stay on the, the mesmerized, mesmerized list. list. So I got to turn this I don't know, down. He's, he's been in a lot of movies with uh, other Coen Brothers uh, alumni. So yeah, it's bound to happen at some point. Francis, yeah. Francis will eventually say, I want to be in a movie with Christopher Walken. Yeah, but Walken will say, no, I'm sorry. I need to be on the mesmerized list, so I That's can't right. take yeah. that role. I can't sure, risk sure, it. I'm sure he will. That's why we haven't seen Francis McDormand and, if he and Viola Davis role, together. If he does take that role, though, you will see Walken acting his ass off, That's trying right. to keep up. Keep up. <laughs> <laughs> so bye-bye, nice. Vigo. Bye-bye, Vigo. Well, but you know what Vigo could make? Nothing. He could make the undoubted list. How? Well, what's his last? Have we looked? I haven't looked, so there's don't a, get don't a, get angry, Bryce. Well, there's a reason why he's not already on it because we always double check it when we did we sure? did yeah. we double check it when we okay go ahead let's waste time why not we got we got nothing but time it's, do we we we're, we're, we watch we're two, almost we watch the two podcast this is week. yeah we only watched two movies this week all right here we go mm. it's probably 
Uh, okay, so his last movie was Falling. Yeah, I can't remember where I, whether that was a meh or whether it was... Mm. I can't either. And then Green Book, which actually I gave a Mondo, but I'm not sure what you gave. Yeah, I think I gave it meh, too. Well, there's the, that's Captain, why we can't go any Captain further. Captain Fantastic yeah. was Mondo. Meh. There's too many mehs right there. <laughs> so there you go. That's why he's not... You keep going back further, and he, you know he has such creative lot, choices. There's a lot of mondos on this list. Oh, there's a lot of mondos, but there's and sounds even, like there's three mez in a row. He's even yeah. like a Lord of the Rings. And I oh wait, yeah, he made those, he, he did make Hidalgo. Yeah, Hidalgo <laughs> was not good. No, but then he made a history of violence with my which boy, which was a mondo, super duper mondo, and Eastern Promises, which was also which was super also mondo. a mondo. But that doesn't get you on the undoubted list. It's a tough list to get on. It is. So, well, all of our lists are tough. It's an easy list to get off, though. <laughs> <laughs> once you're on, your once you make are an MCU, like, once you, you get you into the MCU, do, what you need to do is you get on the mon- the undoubted list, and then you retire. That's right. Like, um, what's his face? Yeah, just like what's his face or die. Yeah, or die. Or die. Yeah, that works. That works. Yeah, because um. Hitchcock's on there. <laughs> on their suicide note, I made the undoubted list. I want to be there forever. <laughs> I so I, so I've killed myself. Right. Ouch! <laughs> All right, ready for your next victim? Worst has has ever heard. Yes. Oh, we've got a new walking off. Do we? New walking uh, off. Murray's delivers. Just like I was really hesitant about this one. Just like Sam bringing that. What do we got? But he's in this. This he's in more than one movie with this guy, so he's going to pop up eventually. Okay. King of New York, nineteen ninety. <gasps> what? I love King of New York. Christopher Walken and Steve Buscemi. Oh, Bam. and he makes Fantastic. more than one movie with this guy, so they're going to face off at some point. Nice. So there you go. And that King one, that New one, York. I did see on on Tubi, so. Have you ever seen this movie? It's so good. Yeah. So, so I think, good. I think I saw Gangsters or X-Con or something like that. So, oh. All right. I'm, uh, at least I'm looking forward to watching the movie. Yeah. There you go. I think I've seen it probably three times. Yeah, I've probably seen it at least three times. Yeah. It's cool. And I am more than willing to watch it again. That, I am so excited. Is that our list? So. I think that's it. Unless I there's anything else, we didn't have anybody else. That... Nope. All right then. Uh, last week on Rage or Dare, Bryce's worst fears finally came to fruition when he oh, finally Jesus. pulled the second Fast and the Furious film. Dear Lord. From the always blissful listener Dare bag. This week, Jim will choose his own fate at when he can rage or dare. First, let's check in with Bryce and see if the reason the Fast and Furious franchises are awful is because the doubted Vin Diesel's in them, or even without him, they'd still be deplorable. Yeah. So the movie started, and just as you mentioned, you're kind of alluding to, the credits at the start had no mention of Vin Diesel. And you're like, what? So I thought to myself, maybe this won't be that bad. bad. I mean... There's no Vin, right? But, but but there is Paul Walker, and he's pretty repulsive. In I, fact, yeah. I wish we would have brought him. <laughs> I speak ill of the dead. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to have to, Murray. I'm sad to say that even with the absence of Vin, the film was still awful. So it was deplorable. It opened with a lot of noise as we jumped right into a dumb street race, and from there it just got more and more noisy and dumb. In the opening race, we got the pleasure of watching two cars jump off a bridge, single file, at the same angle. Yet instead of ramming right into the back of the car in front of him, pretty boy Paul Walker's character flies over top of his competitor. Which what? Is, which he it, which, passes him in midair. Yeah, it's not possible. <laughs> From there, we get a weird story where Walker's character, who is a former Wait, disgraced cop... Can you hold just for a second? I can. Just... I, I need to understand something. Yeah. It's very important. So this is now the second Fast and the Furious film in the franchise. Right. And already the physics doesn't is work in these movies? They haven't yeah. even got to space yet. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. In the second movie, physics is no longer exists. Yeah. 
It, but wow. it actually didn't exist in the first movie if you go back and watch it. So, <laughs> I don't Physi- want to. There's no, I don't want there's, to. There's no physics involved with the Fast <laughs> and the Furious <laughs> franchise. So, it's been since number one. It's been since number one. All the nine. whole thing is, That's it's right. got exponentially less more, physics. Less, <laughs> less physics. As it's more, gone along. It's got more or less physics. But more at more no point did it ever yeah, exist. <laughs> okay, just so that I've cleared that up. Now, I'm glad you had to go back all the way to number two. Uh, yes. Number two, number Bryce. Two. It was number two. At any rate, from there we get a weird story where Walker's character, who is a former disgraced cop, gets recruited by the FBI, I think, to infiltrate some sort of organization. So he gets an old buddy to, to help him with this this mission with the permission from, like, the FBI. And I guess that they will be transporting some money. And I'm not sure why they cannot just arrest this kingpin guy who seems to be breaking a lot of laws. And the FBI already has some agent acting as his girlfriend undercover. So you'd think that after a year or two that she has been with him, that she would have gotten some sort of evidence to lock him up. But there's a question of who she's loyal to and why transporting this money will make any difference to their case against this bad guy is beyond me. But we do get a lot of car chases. <gasps> car chases. And in the end, we get pretty boy Paul Walker and his buddy jumping their car from the land onto a boat. Wow. And all the bad guys are arrested or die. And pretty ball boy Paul Walker. Say that five times fast. Yes. And his buddy somehow walk away with a bunch of bad guy money. Vin Diesel or no Vin Diesel, any of these furious fast movies are terrible. And this was no different. Too fast, too furious is too awful for words. Well, maybe one word. Rage. But wasn't Ludacris in this? Ludacris is in all of them. All of them. <laughs> but isn't he great? No. Oh. DMX and I don't know all those other rapper guys. There's a, names. But there was James Remar was in this. I don't know. James Remar. Yeah. How does James Remar not save this movie? James Remar. I think Tyrese Gibson was in it too, wasn't he? Maybe. Was this directed by Michael Bay? No. I don't think any of them. No, it was. Oh, it's John Singleton. It was John Singleton. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps we should we should talk we're gonna, next week we're gonna talk Paul Walker and we're gonna talk John Singleton. I think isn't Paul Walker already on he's Some gotta kind be, of list? He's on the repulsive for sure. I I brought unless someone didn't agree, because I know I brought he's when we came up with the repulsive list, yeah, first person that would have come up would be He's Paul number Walker, two, right? actually. Yeah. Just like this movie. Yeah. Number I, one for you, for those needing to know, yeah, is Hayden Christensen. There you go. That's that <laughs> makes oh, sense. Hayden Christensen. <laughs> Bing bang boom. We got the two, the most deservingly deserve to be on those, as one and two. But did we go through to see if he is also doubted? Uh, well, I think all he acts in are Fast and Furious movies, so I would assume that no, he's that's not doubted. totally true. He did some of this stuff. All right. Well, guess and, what? And Next will, week, and we're he will talking be, he, he will be doubted forever. Yeah, he will. Yes, unfortunately. Because. because dancing on the poor man's grave. Yeah, that's right. Because, you know, he, so cold he and ceases heartless. to exist. Yep. It's true. We are. <sighs> yeah, this was so bad. I, I, I. And you know what? Did you remember seeing this one in cinema too? Yeah, I, I did. See, it just shocked me. It's weird. The only one I didn't went see to them in the theater. Yeah, I've got, I used to go to like Raise Your Voice starring Hillary Duff in theater though, because I I had every afternoon. I remember I didn't work for like many many years because I basically uh, just made money doing other stuff. Quote in quotes. <laughs> I made money doing we, I was, other we will, we will, stuff. We if you must we're gonna leave it at if that. No, no, know. no, no. We no, don't want anyone we, we to want know. To we want to leave it with other, other stuff. stuff. Hashtag all, right. all mysterious. Like. Bryce is doing other stuff. Fair enough. I love it. All right. Now turn. I get to choose. You, you, you do. You know what. I'm going to, you know what? I haven't had enough rage in my life this week. I'm pulling from Bryce's bag. Oh, then you'll get some rage. Oh, sure. yeah. Uh, that would be the gray bag. The oh, gray great. Oh. That way you can't peek into the it. The non-transparent to... bag. Oh. Exactly. Whatever you oh, get, you whatever. Yeah. something Fernandez. bit my finger. That's right. Yes. It was. <laughs> that, that whole bag is just full of rage. I don't know. And it's, it's. I ordering. think you might get one or two wrong. Oh, well, we'll see. 
What you got there, Jim? I will be watching in very small printing without my reading glasses. <laughs> Ghosts of a Girlfriend's Past? Yeah, Matthew I've, McConaughey. I've heard of it. What? That's a movie? That's a movie. I have heard of it. <laughs> well, Enjoy. I'm kind of... I do love Matthew McConaughey hey, now. Hey, All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. I, I am a huge Matthew McConaughey fan now. Now. <laughs> but I seem to remember his early part of his oh, career. He's done a few. I uh, hated every single Fool's thing. Fool's Gold and a few other ones. Like I, I seem to remember, yeah, Fool's Gold was one of the most painful movies I think I've ever seen. Mm. Is it? Is it better than that? Uh, no. Are you sure? Is it worse? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can watch it on Super Channel, so I can go over to Murray's house and watch it. I don't it. have there Super you Channel. you got all these, uh, these you have movie channels. I've got Craves. <laughs> Super Channel is like Shaw. Thank God this movie's early enough that it couldn't bump off Emma Stone, because she's in this movie. Our Emma undoubted Stone. Emma Stone she's is in this movie. Undoubted? Yeah. Wow. She is undoubted. She is. Huh. I'm really looking forward to this. Looks it good, even, right? It even has Jennifer Garner in it. She's always a yeah. She's always <laughs> terrible. You mean the ex Mrs. Affleck? That's right. She could probably She finally it. wised up and she said, I'm out of here. <laughs> could cheat on her a few times. Yeah, probably. Oh, jeepers. Oh, jeepers, eh? Hey? Oh, jeepers. Oh, jeepers. Oh, thanks, Ragers, for listening. Thanks, the extended Film Rage family, who you can find in our show notes. And get ready for next week. Because an all new Rager Dare's coming to you as we get the most powerful nerdy photographer to join Film Rage in his voice alone will make you joygasm. Find us on social media everywhere at Film Rage YYC. Check out everything Film Rage at FilmRageYYC.com, including our merch site for Redbubble and Tee Public. We are always wanting to make this a raging blast for our listeners, so please comment, like, and subscribe and send us an email to FilmRageCalgary at gmail.com. Dare us to see terrible movies to fuel our rage. But no matter what you do, please... Please, please make us rage. That's it for this week. Rage on. Rage on.